nanorobots inserted into the bloodstream that perform surgeries on their own. That's still science fiction, but researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Stuttgart, Germany, have now gotten one step closer to this vision of the future. Here in our lab, uh, we develop two kinds of micro swimmers or nano swimmers. Um, one kind is called a micro scallop. Uh, it uses open and closed motion to swim in non Newtonian fluid. Another is uh, we call a nano propeller. So it's a corkscrew structure and it's very small in nanometer size and it can uh, translate forward by its rotational motion. The microscope is 600 micron in length and 300 micron uh, in width. Uh, comparing to a human hair, a human hair is normally 100 micron in diameter, so it's three times a human hair. And the nano propeller is even smaller. It's at nanometer scale range, so the diameter of the nano propeller is only 100 nanometer, and the length is 400 nanometer. The movement of nanoswimmers had the researchers facing a challenge. In water, a Newtonian fluid that is characterized by its linear viscous flow behavior, the microscallop would actually not make any headway thanks to the symmetrical opening and closing. But the good news is that in our body, our biological fluids are normally non-Newtonian, which means they are, uh, most of them are shear, has shear thinning effect. Now our scallop take advantage of this shear thinning effect, and it means that we use uh, different speed at opening and closing. In the shear, shear thinning effect, we open fast and close slowly. So in this way, uh, we can use this property to swim forward. And for the nano propellers, uh, we uh, employ a rotating magnetic field. The rotating magnetic field will cause the uh, nano propeller to rotate. And because of its helical structure, it will couple the rotating uh, motion to its translational motion. So it will move forward. The researchers produce the nano swimmers using a printing process. During the selection of materials, their compatibility was especially important. For the micro scallop, uh, we use first a 3D printing and then micro molding technique. Uh, that means that we first 3D print the mold and then we mold polymer material inside the mold. It means that we can use almost all kinds of uh, polymer material that you can mold. Uh, in the experiment, I use PDMS, that's polydimethyl siloxane, uh, one kind of siloxane, and that is a silicon material, very soft and biocompatible. For the nano propellers, we use inorganic materials, uh, for example, silicon, silicon dioxide, uh, titanium oxide, or uh, silicon. And for the magnetic material we use in the nano propeller, we use nickel or cobalt. We have to use inorganic material and it will be much stable at this nanoscale. Someday the task force's basic research could lead to an application of the tiny vehicles in medicine. Ich denke, wir haben eine gewisse Zeit vor uns, bis solche Mikrosysteme tatsächlich zu diagnostischen Maßnahmen im menschlichen Körper eingesetzt werden können. Wir haben erste gute Erfahrungen. I believe it will take some time before we can actually use such microsystems for diagnostic purposes in the human body. So far, we were able to demonstrate that this is possible in vitro. Now we're on the brink of testing these small particles on eyeballs of pigs. Yet I believe it will still be several years, if not decades, before these approaches will find their way into everyday clinical practice. We're essentially interested in an extreme miniaturization of surgical procedures. This increases surgical effectiveness, reduces operating times, and makes minimally invasive interventions possible. Today, there are already sophisticated medical instruments, for example in neurology, that enable the removal of ureters or kidney stones. However, these interventions always involve anesthesia. Thanks to extreme miniaturization, these interventions could potentially be pain-free and performed without anesthesia on patients someday. ...derartig miniaturisiert werden können, dass diese Eingriffe eben schmerzfrei und ohne Narkose am Menschen durchgeführt werden können. 
Even though the researcher's development does not make its way to patients immediately, it still opens up new opportunities for medicine and suggests many possibilities in the future. Any speculation on what these tiny particles might someday be able to do for us is science fiction. That is to say, complex surgeries or transporting therapeutic agents against cancer to a designated location using such nanorobots is possibly attainable one day. Yet so far, this is still absolute speculation.